Mr. Boyd, there was a man here earlier. He left you this. A man? What man? Who let him on this floor? I don't know. I've never seen him before. I asked him his name, but he just ignored me. He was talking on a big telephone, you know, one of those portables. He gave me this envelope that he left. Damn. Okay, let's see about this. Of course, they could have shot them the second they took the photo. But I knew Kendrick and his family were all right. Either way, the message was not that they got out. It meant that I was in. My servitude to the Mafia had begun. I'd only been in my new position five seconds, and I already knew why Kendrick called it a contract. You sound doomed if you call it what it is. A curse. Boy. Good morning, Jack. I believe you just received my message. Who am I speaking with? Oh, I'm sorry. I forget some people don't recognize my voice. But I assure you, Jack, if I was sitting right there in front of you, you'd have no trouble recognizing me. Like I was a member of your family. Even better than a wife, perhaps. A wife can betray you. No man is immune. I don't talk to people who don't tell me their names. Oh, Jack, don't be so childish. You're too old to run away from strangers. Yes, we both are. And in our old age, friendship becomes rare and all the more precious. But of course, we must work with new people and find out new names. So if you insist, Jack, let us formally meet. Hello, Jack Boyd. I'm Christopher Sand. Wonderful, Mr. Sand. And what is it you do for a living? Oh, you'll soon find out all about that. Well, you'll learn much more than a simple policeman could ever expect. A simple policeman no longer, Jack. Don't turn off your phone. Start today. Eight in ten. It's been my go-to principle since my first day on the job. I've got to let my colleagues hush up what they need to, two out of ten times, so that they'll help me with the remaining eight. 80 out of 100, 800 out of 1,000. I'm proud of those statistics. It's not so bad for Freeburg, right? But now I just officially became a Mafia whore. I'm supposed to be fearing for my life, for the lives of my wife and children. But the only thing I can think, what's gonna happen to 8 and 10? I drank too much. I don't think I can hold it together today. Can I go home? Yeah. My cats ate some ice cream baths at sell by date and they had diarrhea all night. They are better now, but I'd like to spend the day with them. Can I have the day off? No. I was up all night reading an exciting detective story called The Last Temptation of Neptune, but I didn't have time to get to the ending. I am almost certain that the killer is Commissioner Harold, but I can't rest until I know for sure. Can I go home and finish reading the book? No. Though, no. Those are stupid reasons. You're, you're saying... Singing them is today's song. It's a great one. I highly recommend it. John Sangster, amazing. Quan Yin Lin turned out to be a member of a gang. Ooh. This was the motorcycle one. Oh, I am sorry about that. That is awful. Jesus Christ. Quan Yin Lin turned out to be a member of a gang known as the Red Mass. He could help you take down the gang if you make him an informant, which, of course, you gotta accept. Gang goes all the way to the freaking top. Investigate Ning He, please. And Armstrong, this is your case because, um, you know, my other guy, he's gone. We could hire one more officer, which is amazing. Hideo Sogo, Lazzarini, Pope, Higgins, Obi. I don't know. I think I'll wait on this one. I think I'll wait on, on that officer. They're mad that I didn't fire the black cops. I don't care. 
We're gonna try to take down the red mass within the next four days. Ooh. Right, right, right. We need to wait four days, okay. I only sent them one request because that's, you know, I, I didn't wanna... I wanted to make sure I got that one. Young employee at the factory got into a fight with the manager and was trying to push him into a vat of boiling chocolate. Ridiculous. Let's send Bailey and Price. Holy shit, Bailey is so good. Alright, the Ningyi stuff is here. We'll sort that out by the end of the day. Saved. Saved. Very nice. Good job, Bailey and Price. Parking lot attendant Dylan Burns reported seeing a teenager walking between cars trying handles in hopes of finding an unlocked vehicle. Before the attendant could approach him, the teenager found an unlocked door and shut himself inside. A few seconds later, the teenager was shrieking from the parking lot, greatly exceeding the speed limit. He fled toward the suburbs. That sounds pretty dangerous. Let's send Kochi and Asano on that one. of a banger. That's all I'm saying. Officers, officers have determined the car thief's location. Uh, overtake the offender and block the road. Good job. Very good. A weeping child called in saying that someone was holding him against his will. They won't let me go outside. They torture me and bully me. I don't think I can keep going. I want to go outside and see Pete. That's, uh, the kid is grounded. That's not an issue. We're not sending anyone. Joseph Lowry's mother wouldn't let him go play until he ate his broccoli. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Not bothering with that. We received a call from an angry casino patron. He claims that one of the casino girls that was hanging around his table lifted his wallet, which is carrying a couple of thousand dollars in cash and several credit cards. Casino security shoved him outside saying that he was drunk, but the man isn't giving up so easily. Yeah, let's send Bailey and Price again, honestly. They're, they're doing well. We're dealing with a moron who refuses to repay his debt, says that police will protect him. I think it's time we showed him whose side police are on. Okay, Asano, go to that. We gotta make everyone happy. We gotta make City Hall happy. We gotta make the Mafia happy. It's a balancing act. Amazing. Great job. Price is getting better. At a parking lot exit, a security guard stopped a suspicious looking van and asked to check the driver's membership card. The female driver reached casually to the glove apartment, fold, pulled out a gun, and opened fire. Let's send Kochi, Subaki, Purdy, and Asano on this one. Yeah, it feels like a tough one, so sending out big squad with a lot of people who know what they're doing. Kochi and Purdy, mostly. Police cruiser has caught up with the perpetrator's van. Uh, shoot the criminal's tires. The van takes a sharp turn and crashes through the window of a sex shop. A woman exits the vehicle, grabs the shop attendant, but it puts a gun to his head. Oh, shit. This is tough. 
I think we shoot the criminal. Holy shit. Expertly done. Expertly done. Wow. That was good. The investigation's gonna end soon. There we are. And uh, let's let's see if these these just work. Right? They open the door, they go in. Amazing. Perfect. Great. Now we send somebody. Honestly, send send Bailey and Price. We can send them with the SWAT team even. Rest of the squad's back. It's still, yeah, it's still these people. Okay. I wonder if tomorrow the, the pool will change and I'll get different people. We'll see. We'll see. Offender caught. Great job. And now, well, tomorrow, I guess, we start to investigate you. I'm going to send Mole. Mm. No, we can do it with just Beasley and Moser. We're good. I was thinking of sending her to work tomorrow so that we could put her on the the Mafia case. The, what, the, the Yakuza case, I guess it is. But we don't need to. The people of Freeburg have built up a tolerance for the petty horrors of modern life. You'll never see crowds gathering around a beaten passerby. Folks rarely even slow to gawk at a car accident. And street theft doesn't turn heads anymore. Been a long time since people got worked up about stuff like that. So when I ran into a troubled crowd on the way to work, I knew there was something serious going on. Something bad enough to knock these people out of their daily rhythm. And we're talking about people who would step over a corpse if it was blocking the door to the coffee shop. But apparently all it takes is a bunch of leaflets, or spreading broken glass across Main Street, or releasing a couple of hundred rats in the ice arena. The mysterious figure taking responsibility for these strange acts goes by the alias Robespierre. Nobody knows who he is, what he wants, or what all this adds up to, from the buckets of lard spread on the sidewalk to the front door of City Hall covered with ostrich feathers. But this strange cross between childhood pranks and cheap theatrics has got the people all worked up. Everyone understands when some Freeburg crook satisfies the basic human need to rob and kill. But when someone steals a lion from the local zoo and locks him in a cell below the courthouse, the people start asking questions. Myself, I kind of like this robes Pierre. It's not just the pranks he's pulling or his green bull's head emblem. I just like his funny nickname. Robes Pierre? Really? Who does that make me? The Marquis de Lantanac? I don't think so. In the old books about revolutions, I fancy myself the old gunner who goes off to war with a bag of damp powder. Or maybe the innkeeper who tops up the beer kegs with mop water. Hmm. It's something to think about. Martin Stett is your new deputy. Ooh. I drank too much. I don't think I can hold it together today. Can I go home? Yeah. Yeah, you can. Oh, we can buy, we can buy music. Oh my God, we can buy music. Oh, I love these songs. Oh, that's so cool. 
So we can't buy these ones yet. Temptation Blues is new by Turk Murphy. And uh, we can buy these as well. This train is my favorite song in the game. I mean, I gotta buy them all though. Of course. So, my favorite song, this train, that's the one we're listening to. Okay, it's the same people. Let's get Sogo, honestly, for shift A. I feel like this shift needs it. A shoe store clerk reports that two teenagers found the most expensive sneakers on to play. Tried to try them on and without playing, wearing out of the shop wearing the new shoes. Let's send Vindal and Birch Jr. Birch Jr. really needs the training. What's Wait, what's going on? Where's Birch? Oh, he's here. Okay, he's here. Don't worry. Who am I missing? It's just Roy? Okay. That's fine. You can kill people, which I don't want to. See, that's one thing you could do, and what if they tell you like fire all black cops, you could set a trap and kill them. I don't, I wouldn't want to, but you know, sometimes you have to do stuff like that. I know there's one that's hire, fire all old cops. They want you to do too. I don't want to do that either. I don't like firing my people. A man returned from work earlier than usual and found his young wife in bed with her lover. The maid called the police when she saw the husband taking a hunting rifle from the wall cabinet. Alright, Stovall, you're taking... You're taking the whole squad. I mean, I... The teens are standing around smoking not far from the store. Admiring their new shoes. Okay, well... Mind if I have a cigarette? Hello, fellow kids. Amazing. We can get Birch Jr. to become somebody. He can get good. I promise. This train don't carry no candles. All right, we're going to send Robbins to that so that City Hall likes us. We have Vandal and Birch Jr. Something else happens. These guys are coming back soon. Everything went well. Thank God. A young father deprived of his parental rights tried to pick up his daughter from school. When he wasn't allowed access, he attached a teacher, attacked a teacher, knocked her to the ground, and started kicking her. Alright, um, let's actually see if some, if, if, if the other people can get back in time. What is this? Oh, right. Mr. Boyd, I have a very sensitive issue which our mutual friend Charles D Dial, Dill, Dilly, said you he could help me with. As you may already know, I own the largest music store in Freeburg. Recently, my ex-wife got my record collection in the lawsuit. There's a lot of rare records. My ex is very afraid of the police and always tries to act like a law-abiding citizen. Some of you guys went over there in uniform and told her those records were evidence and an important investigation. She'd just smile and give them whatever they asked for, not even check into the warrant. Honestly? Let's let's go for it then. I don't know why we need three for that. <sighs> let's just do this and Vandal can come back if ever needed. Okay, 2209 at the engineering plant. That's when we cannot send people. We have to let that one go. 2209. I feel like that's a dangerous one, too. I think they'll kill you. I feel like they'll kill you if you go to that one. 
Gert says someone got into the exhibition called Strong Pictures of Penises in the Artwork and Head in the Closet. Vandal, you can deal with that one. Ulrich Bieber says, Chief, we helped Ulrich Bieber to thank us. He gave us a Gennaro Crespo album, The, the Master. True Samadhi prefers glam, so he was really sad at the bar by the time the shift ended. That's all? That's great. Okay. Fender caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed. Amazing. Song ended? Let's play it again. All right, Birch and Birch Jr. are back. All the lights are on when the police arrive. The museum caretaker explains that he's only had the job a couple weeks and he's worried he's going to be fired over this foolishness. The police calm him down and he points out the bathroom stall that the artist has locked himself inside. Enter the adjoining stall. Terrified a fearful young man holding a knife insists that he's engaged in some kind of performance art and that no one understands him. He refuses to surrender, threatening to stab himself. Tell me more about your work. Yep, yep, Vandal knows what's up. I know what's up. We know what's up. That was good. Very good. Okay, 2209. That's when the Mafia are going to do their thing. I really think if we go, we'll get shot. I'll click on it, but I'm not going to go to it. <sighs> Two offenders stealing aluminum from a factory through a hole in the wall. Okay. We let that go. Oh, wait. I forgot to do... Oh, I forgot to do this. Oops. Okay, great. Thank you. Fender escaped. Right, right. That's the goal. Investigation has started. Jack, you must have seen the newspaper stories about Thomas Blaine, the retired cop who went schizophrenic and shot a pregnant woman. To ensure the tragedy doesn't repeat itself, we decided to conduct psychological testing for all cops over 50 years of age. That includes you, Jack, tomorrow morning. Dr. Eleonora Waterbury is waiting for you in her office. Don't be late. Yep. Alright, Beasley and Moser, you need to you get you're gonna need to come to work tomorrow. I'm sorry. Sorry to say it. Mr. Boyd, this is a very simple test. I'll show you a card with an abstract image. You just look at them and tell me what you see. Oh, this is sad. A man taking a handful of tablets in the barn. A man going back to his house. A woman decorating a Christmas tree. I remember this. A man giving a woman a Christmas ornament. The woman dropping the Christmas ornament. Pieces of the Christmas, or Christmas ornament all over the floor. The man yelling at the woman. The woman slapping the man. The man pushing the woman. The woman falling over with the Christmas tree. Thank you for your time, Mr. Boyd. I will inform you about the test results in the coming days. Yeah, yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> no black employees at City Hall. Mayor says accident. <laughs> I drank too much and I don't think I can hold it together today. Can I go home? Yeah. 
Too tired, I can hardly walk straight. Can I go home? Jesus, come on. I'm too tired, I can hardly walk straight. What happened? No. You have to stay. We need Robins. We need Robins to carry this, this shift. Um, what, what other ones haven't we done yet? Hold on. Just Billabong. Okay, Billabong's great, so I'm very happy to play that one. Is that the one they play first, maybe? Like, by default? Oh, no, it's not. Uh, no. This one's nice, though. Or maybe it, I don't remember what the first one they play is. Never mind. A few months ago, an unregistered feminist organization appeared in Freeburg. Today, they are holding their first protest. As far as we know, the organization is backed by foreign sponsors, and their goal is to get people into important positions in City Hall. The protest may escalate into something more serious, and we need to show them who's in charge. Use batons and tear gas, even firearms if necessary. Let's show them what intimidation looks like up close and personal. So this is yet another fucked up thing that City Hall makes you do. And I think I, I should do this one because I'm not firing my old people and I'm not firing my black people. So I feel like I should suppress the feminist rally as much as I don't want to. Mr. Boyd, your psyche is in good shape. My only concern is your stress level, right? My research shows that Beethoven's music soothes and relaxes the nervous system. I recommend you invest in a good bit of old Ludwig van. It will help with any violent urges you might be feeling. I'll take that under account tomorrow. You got it. Thank you. About 50 women are gathered in the park chanting, let us be successful. Just, just for, just for them. Jack, we have a problem. The chief prosecutor of Freeburg is a woman and it seems she's on the side of the feminist. You might be walking into some serious legal problems. We better fit safe and fake some evidence to shield you from any possible prosecution. I don't have enough money for that. I spend it all on music. Sorry about that. Dissatisfied client entered some law offices with the pistol, took several employees hostage, and demanded a meeting with the firm's partners. Those shyster Jews took me for a ride. They sucked up all my money, and still my son went to jail. Yikes. Ah, shit. <laughs> shit. <laughs> there go all my good officers. Please come back. Suppress the protest by force? I have to, yeah. Sadly. I have to, to make City Hall like me. All right, what do you want? 1240 at the casino, okay. We'll let that slide. Vendor caught, officers unharmed, civilians unharmed, amazing. A young woman set fire to the movie theater during a show, the show and fled. Wait, hold on. Where are all my people? They weren't doing anything with the other thing? Moser, get off that case. We need you on this one. I need another detective slot, that's for sure. Okay, this is the casino. Carrying a grenade through a duffel bag on the floor demanded that it be filled with money. You can have it. Investigation has started into the arson. Good. Can I change who is on it? Like, could I make this a Vickers case instead? No. Moser still has to head it. Okay. Fair enough. 
Mr. Boyd, today we're installing a new slot machine called Super Magdalene 3. The last time we put in a new one, one of the bigger kids almost broke it the first day. It'd be great if you could send us a couple of your men to keep the kids under control. Okay. $1,000. Fender escaped. Oh, that's what I was afraid of. Yeah, that's pretty fucked up. When, when you're the cause of the civilian dying, uh, here. Mole, you're gonna move to shift A. I want the numbers to be more even. I feel like we need another detective. A pregnant girl called in a report on a suspicious gynecologist who she met in reception. The doctor was behaving very strangely and attempted to persuade the girl to have an abortion. Though she was already five months pregnant, though streaming tears, she explained, through streaming tears, she explained, the doctor said that for only $10,000, he would save me from the parasite inside my body. Stovo and Samadhi, you can go on that one. Everything went great. Okay, good. Let's play some, some Beethoven for my sanity. Housewife Takara Montez often complains to the police about her neighbors. They're con constantly making a racket and often getting into fights. Always refusing to discuss things with their neighbors. She's called the police again today after hearing loud bangs in the apartment along with loud screams. According to her, about six or seven people live there. I feel like they're just watching a movie. I really feel like they're just watching a movie. The doctor spots the police, grabs his scalpel, and boldly shouts, Come on, I'll release your souls from this filthy world. Taser. Taser. Good shit. The B team can go get that one. I'm getting called in for questioning for suppressing the protest. Um, literally, the mayor told me to. City Hall told me to. Get them in. Oh, this sucks. This sucks. Uh-oh. Stovall and Samadhi are back, thank God. They are necessary. Come on. Really? A call came in from a hotel occupant who was concerned about the cries of a woman in an adjoining room. Sounds to me like someone is being raped. That better be a movie. <laughs> oh, Vandal and Robbins are coming back. Ah, uh, but then... The arson... It would happen like... Or I guess it would happen like this, right? She runs in, sets fire, boards it. Okay, this is not enough. Okay, we're gonna actually have to read this one. Got it. Okay, good. This is important. I don't... Oh, shit. Is this not enough? I guess this isn't enough. Fuck. Ah, oh, we're gonna have to read that one too. Call came in, yeah, I know. How'd this go? It went well. Okay, let's let's send Vandal and Robbins to this then.
You know, I'm, I'm proud of the B team for handling that one. They needed backup, but the backup came and and it worked out very nice. The door to one of the rooms on the second floor is standing ajar and through it can be seen a large man holding a crying girl by the neck. He's striking her in the face and shouting, Shut up, you whore. I paid, you, I paid to you. Now keep quiet. Point a gun at the man. The girl managed to escape, but her pimp leads for the man, and another fight breaks out. Use pepper spray. The man shoves the pimp away and suddenly jumps out the window. Shoot him. It's the only way to get him. Shoot him. It worked out. Good job. Good job. That day was spent. No! Really quit! I just want to spend more time with my family. No! Ah. Oh. Is that a scripted event? Does Roy always quit? I feel like Roy always quits. I might be wrong, but that's how I feel. We should be able to hire somebody to replace them at least. Temptation Blues. That's a good one. Turk Murphy. Love Turk Murphy. Kim Tsubaki is today a hero, having pulled a drowning Senator Wallace Green from the river. The municipality on the Senator's recommendation has decided to reward this outstanding officer. The ceremony is scheduled for July 27th, and the event will be open to the press, as well as Mr. Green's family, who wish to personally thank the police. Make sure nothing unusual happens to this officer, so she will be able to attend the ceremony and receive her medal without complications. I will try my best. Fuck you! I tried so hard! Okay, yeah, there's a hearing, right? I want it all. These people aren't cutting it. I need the market to refresh. They're not good enough. An ice cream van struck a schoolboy. The ambulance arrived quickly, but the boy was declared dead on the scene. The nearby residents are enraged and demand justice from the driver of the van. He's currently holed up inside the ambulance while the paramedics try to reason with the crowd. The situation is quickly spiraling out of control. Uh, I, I trust Kochi for that one. Yeah, as much as I want to hire someone else. I gotta wait on that. Some black gangster hit one of our shops. It's too much for us to deal with right now. Can you help? I guess I can. Wait. Subaki can't go because Subaki might die. If one of these guys dies, that sucks if it's happening. I would have sent more people, but you told me to only send freaking one! Honestly, if I just send Bailey, she'll be fine. Bailey's good enough. Don't kill them. Courthouse at 1830. Okay. They did not die. Good. Good. An elderly man called the police station reporting that terrible screams have been coming from the sawmill for over an hour. The hell is going on? What's a guy got to do to get a little sleep around here? You'd better go check it out. I don't think it's anything, but... I gotta send everyone. Okay, that worked out. When is the sand thing? Hold on. Oh, God. Jeez, I forgot. 1630? That sounds right. Oh, we get a paddy wagon for this? That's really good. We need that, yeah. 
Bailey and Coach are back. They can handle anything. So, I'm not that concerned. The sawmill is surrounded by a nine-foot fence, and the gates are locked from inside. Shouts can be heard from within. Ram the gate with the police cruiser. A man is threatening a young boy with a circular saw. The man is screaming hysterically. Raise a gun. Okay. That's a scary one. Subaki was there, too. An emergency call was received from an all-night drugstore. An addict is attempting to gain unlawful entry. He violently threatened a female pharmacist, demanding she open the cabinets. I want my people to be back by then. I don't want to send both Bailey and Kochi. Chief, we rode along, went over the patients with their empty-headed drivers. We're done for the day. Mr. Sand dropped off a brand new paddy wagon. It's a nice piece of equipment. Too good for the idiots. We'll be packing inside. Okay. We have to just go. We don't have time, sadly. Well, that's odd. Very loud. During sentencing, a serial killer by the name of Albert Ramirez seized a gun from the holster of the court bailiff and after shooting several witnesses, barricaded himself inside the courtroom. A young stenographer has been taken hostage. Okay. Gotta send everyone. Oh, I definitely sent people to the mafia thing, didn't I? This was it? Was this the mafia thing? Probably. I don't know. I refuse. You can do it. <gasps> no! <sighs> it was that one. Yancy, Purdy, and Tsubaki are all dead. Holy fuck. That's terrible. These people are not good. Oh my god. That's my fault. I'm a bad police chief, clearly. I've, I've let these people die. There's two people left on my shift. It's Bailey and Kochi. That's it. Wow. The door to the apartment is locked from the inside and unintelligible screams can be heard within. <sighs> Break down the door. The victim is bound and lying on the floor. The assailant is sitting on top of him, waving a syringe filled with an unknown substance. A bottle of bleach is on the floor nearby. We're on your side. Tell us about this conspiracy. The man jumps and grabs some papers from the table. Everything's written down right here. All the evidence you need. They created these medications to control our minds. All right, let's uh, let's talk down at the station. We'll we'll get on that right away. Great. Wow, Subaki, Yancy, and Purdy. That's so messed up. Ah, oh. Buck, Yancy, Linda, Purdy. Kintsubaki. Ah. Oh. End the day. Wow. I'm, de I'm declaring them all dead. I'm not delaying the paperwork. Damn. Damn, damn, damn. That's messed up. Why did you send your officers to the feminist protest? It's my job. It's a major event the police were obliged to attend. In your opinion, did any of the participants at the protest pose any danger to others? Definitely. Whenever there's over 50 people gathered in a single place, there's always a chance something will go off. Mr. Boyd, you're married or are you not? None of your business. Don't try to bring my family into this. 
What are your personal feelings about women? The same as men. As far as I'm concerned, they're the same as men. Some women are great and some I don't care much for. Mr. Boyd, did you give the order to suppress protests by force? No, City Hall did. The mayor gave me a direct order in writing. I had no choice but to carry it out. In my new role as corrupt official, I had to give up some of my favorite habits. I couldn't turn off my phone when my head ached. Couldn't sleep till noon on Saturday and let the rest of HQ take up the slack. No more days off to go fishing. But my weekly visit to the old colony club was more like tradition. One night a week, I absorbed cigar smoke, the vague smell of alcohol, the stench of urine, all mixed with toxic levels of old drunken belches. Same picture it was 30 years ago. Tradition's gotta be honored. And to stay faithful to the tradition, you've gotta respect the standard ritual. When you're about to roll out of the club, you need to take a deep breath and count to a hundred. If your stomach doesn't do a backflip, you should be good to make it home. This time, I only got up to sixty. I was interrupted. Why? You look even better than you do on TV. There's nothing more impolite than approaching people in the alley at the old colony. This is the most private place in the city. All who enter here dirty their shoes with the most elite stream of vomit in Freeburg. This asphalt has been blessed by judges, lawyers, artists, businessmen, and all our politicians. Takes a lot of balls to crash the party. My head was a drunken haze, but I knew who he was. A cartoon gangster suit straight out of Dick Tracy. Fancy voice, fruit cologne, sassy strut. That's how the newspapers described Vikas Varga, rising star in Freeburg's criminal underworld. He appeared out of nowhere, and with the support of the local punks, Varga broke all the old rules of organized crime. He killed those who could not be killed, traded what could not be traded, and robbed those who could not be robbed. In just a single month, this man had gathered an incredible amount of power. He's been called everything from a clown to a madman to a criminal genius. And more often than not, he's called a low-class upstart short on ideas. But if Vargas was one of the old crime bosses, He'd have been cut into pieces and fed to the river. Look past this guy's arrogance and there's something about him. The city is still deciding what to do with him. Meanwhile, he's burning down the houses of old city mobsters. Not the best time to talk, Mr. Varga. Well, you know my name. I'm flattered. Although not very surprised, to be honest. I might be a little short on manner. Like they say in your fair city, with the right manners, you can go anywhere. Well, I don't want to go anywhere. I want to stay right here. Even the criminal world needs manners, Mr. Varga. One of them is this. Don't interfere with a drunken cop who's trying to take a shit and puke at the same time. He's right. Oh, you exaggerate. But is Freeburg always so gentle with its officers? been a bit roughed up lately. I see you already know Freebird quite well, Mr. Varga. Well, I love to learn and look around, but I do know that the inhabitants of this fair city should be friends, Jack. Maybe it's true I don't have the best manners. After all, it's only polite for friends to share their phone numbers. This city of yours moves so fast. I feel like I'm hooked on amphetamines all over again. Wake up in the morning full of ideas. And by nightfall, you've all had each other killed. So don't wait too long to call. I don't mind if you're drunk. It's all the more fun. I'll be stoned myself, most likely. Hell, I'm a little stoned right now. It's the only way to live in this place. I like your city, Jack. I'm here to stay. If it weren't for the phone number written on my arm, I probably wouldn't have remembered the conversation in the morning. 
but there was no reason to worry. I'd be getting a reminder soon. This is all true. Every single one of those, true. My morning ritual was plagued by the smell of Vicus Varga's fruity cologne. It was like the sharp citrus scent was chasing me around the house, as if Vicus was right there in my living room. When I finally realized the smell was coming from a big basket of oranges, it didn't put me any more at ease. I'd opened my door to lots of threatening mail, evidence of criminal wrongdoing, even a dead ferret or two. But fruit? Never. You the fruit guy? Excuse me? Was it you that brought the basket of oranges? Nah, it was here when I arrived. Fine. So who are you? Today, I'm your driver. And uh, where are we driving? To work. That's it? Yeah, we have to make an important stop along the way. Where? The ranch. What ranch? Just the ranch. Fine. The morning seemed surreal, and I took in the magic. Why wreck it with meaningless chatter? As my tight-lipped chauffeur drove an hour through God knows where, I started to feel like I was in the middle of a bad dream, probably lying bloody and concussed in the alley behind the old colony club, my nose buried in a rotten orange peel. But no, this was no dream. The silence was real, the sound of the engine was real, the dust was real enough too. And there was the ranch over the horizon. It all seemed familiar. The San family's overbearing mansion has been the talk of the headlines for decades, but few have managed to get closer than a few miles. I guess I'm just lucky. I didn't know you took private meetings, Mr. Sand. Only if I expect good company. I'm surprised my company ranks at all. Today, yes. Today is a special day. So it seems. Do you often go to the old colony club, Jack? Every week. Meet any interesting people there? As a rule, no. Sometimes you make a date, right? Sometimes make new friends. Sometimes, I guess. But that's not why I go. And why? I consider it a hobby. Hmm. A hobby? Do you know anything about my hobbies? Well, judging by the half dozen animal skins I stepped on walking over here, it's not much of a reach to say you like hunting. Love it? Well, I say that now. It seemed so tedious when I was a child. It took ever so long. But now, I'm older. I've developed a new talent. Oh, what talent is that? Patience. The will to wait for the right moment. Let's say you want a deer. You know, you deserve it. You've even decided what dishes its meat will go to and where you'll mount its horns. But to get that deer, you've got to wait. To sit in the bushes and stay nice and quiet. Professional hunters will tell you that the hunt is a rare craft. There are many rules. It's shrouded in mystery and ancient skill. Well, that's all complete nonsense. To get a deer, you just sit on the sidelines for a long enough time, pinpoint the moment when it's finally time to shoot. I learned the talent, Jack. But not like you, oh, Jack. You truly are the master. I don't understand. Oh, come on, Jack. I know about the half million. I know your plan. Kendrick told me everything. Needless to say, I'm impressed. While some people learn to hold their breath for minutes on end and not to rustle the leaves too loudly, why you, 
decided to just become the foliage. You turned yourself into a bush, surrounded by deer who've been so fruitfully multiplying for decades. But all this time, you've held your rifle at the ready. Uh, forgive an old man his imagery, Jack. I have the heart of a poet, I confess. Look, I don't know what was said between you and Kenrick, but it sounds like you got it wrong. Oh, I think I understand everything just fine. And I think we understand each other quite well. Jack, in the coming war, we'll make excellent partners. What war? One war falls upon every generation. My grandfather drove out the Ambersons back when he was 27. My father destroyed that psychopath gangster, Boris Bell, when he was a sprightly 30. At 69, I'd begun to think my war had passed me over. But my time has come at last. Tomorrow, Vicus Varga declares war, and I'm obliged to answer. So, we're talking about Varga now. I don't know how he thinks. I don't even know whether he plans his actions or not. I can't divine his purpose, hell. I don't even know where he comes from. He's a man not of our breed, wouldn't you say? But when he arrived here, I invited him in, told him we could work together. An official invitation penned in my own hand and written on some very expensive paper. And can you imagine his reply? A fruit basket. What sense can be made of such a message? I guess it means whatever you want it to. Precisely. I'm late for work, Mr. Sam. You know, Jack, I could just give you half a million right now. Cash, whatever denominations you like. But I would never insult you so. If I went stalking my prey for so many years, I wouldn't want someone else to shoot it for me. I understand you, Jack. And I'll never ask you for anything that's contrary to your nature. Just think about our conversation. Think about it. And call me. Like I said, it's a whole new life, and I've had to give up some old habits. One of them, keeping away from things that don't concern me. Now I can't afford the luxury. This spotlight I'm under, concerns is all I got. Right, I, I knew this choice would come here. I gotta help Sand. Virg has given me no reason to help him. I gotta help Sand. As much as I am upset about Sand, about killing my officers, it's my fault for going. Sand has been there for me. Varga, Varga is not. Varga just showed up. Yeah, you can go home, Debrito. You can go home. <laughs> 